Welcome you guys, it's Josie and Sally, the IOD sisters, and we are bringing you a quick brick tutorial. Our brick roller has been quite the buzz on Instagram since we released it last week, and we've had a ton of requests to show people how to use it. You guys would be amazed at how easy it is. You know we don't bring something to you unless we have tried it and love it, and this is truly easy to use and we're gonna show you exactly how and you can get a ton of different brick looks, whitewash brick, classic brick, vintage brick, painted brick. So we're gonna get started here. So we're gonna start by demonstrating the first, well I shouldn't say the first step. The first step, assuming you have a properly prepared wall that is ready to receive joint compound and we'll have good adhesion. In our instruction notes, we talk a little bit about that and um, just going into the fact that if you, it, that you have a good um, prep wall appropriate for this. So in our case, our walls are already painted in a really flat white. We're not gonna have any um, adhesion issues at all. But say for instance, you have a glossy or semi-gloss, taking the appropriate steps to prime and get a nice um, surface that's appropriate for adhesion with joint compound will be your first step. So what we're gonna do here is go in and we're gonna aim target about a quarter inch thick, even as we can um, layer of our all purpose joint compound. You'll notice I'm using this is actually a pool trowel. If you go to your home supply stores, you're looking for a pool trowel. And the reason we love the pool trowel is because it doesn't have sharp corners for digging in. So it gives you kind of more forgiveness when you're not a professional plasterer and you want to get, you know, not have big gouge lines everywhere. So let's go ahead. And I'm starting in a corner for this step because I want to show you guys, um, like how to handle your corners with this. You're gonna go in with your small, a smaller tool with the sharp edge corner and you're gonna get in there and kind of wiggle it in. And this won't be the exact right thickness, that's okay. You just wanna get your edge up there. And you'll notice we've taped the adjacent surfaces where we're not going to be doing this finish. If you, you'll, as you get to know these tools, you'll kind of get a feel for it. And it's much like frosting a cake. You can shimmy it up and kind of get it right up to that edge really nicely. We're not looking for a perfect finish. We're just looking to kind of get an even-ish quarter inch. Now, here I'll show you. Once you get away from that corner, I like to take this and get reload a little bit on it like that and then get in there and just kind of shimmy up to it. And float it down. And float it down, okay. Right. So you're gonna basically get in there and you're gonna look for a quarter inch thickness and get this spread um, as evenly as you can. Um, you might like get in there and kind of do a little of that to see. It ends up being, a quarter inch is pretty thick. Yeah. And you find like, oh, I, I'll, I need to get in there and do a little more. Um, and if it's not quite that thick, it's okay. Your results will be a little different, a little less dimension, but it's not a bad thing, it's just different. So I would go back in with more, but I'm not gonna bore you with that because that essentially, unless, let me know if there's any questions about this step, mm -hmm. we did step out so that we could move on to the next step. There really is a lot of open time. Ignore that part because that we redid, but the next step we're gonna be in this area here. The thing about this is you're looking for that sweet spot um, to be able to get a good impression without it being too sticky. And you accomplish that in part by letting this set up for <laughs> as little as an hour, but really you can get in there three hours or more if you're getting a good even thick coat on. This has been setting for two hours, okay? Now, before I get ahead of myself, Let's talk about keeping it level, okay? Um, it's not that we're looking- Level up, baby. Level up. It's not that we're looking for perfection. In fact, if you get one of your lines a little bit sloped, 
you can compensate with the other line. But if you keep going in the same direction, you'll have <laughs> the leaning tower the of the leaning tower of your brick wall. <laughs> so there's a few different ways you can approach it. You can you always want to be getting down and spotting your work for sure, no matter what you're using for your level. Um, but you can eyeball it. You can um, do uh, like a, a string lines a few spots because you're not going to try and do it for every roll, but you're going to give yourself, you know, something within a distance of this of your workspace so that you've got something to do a parallel check with something that's level. The easiest probably way and what we're actually just getting tuned into is using an auto leveling laser level and we've got one set up and I'll turn it on. They're affordable and super easy and I'm like, I'm The one this. we bought was 30 bucks. Let me so, turn it on. Super affordable. And see how it's wobbly? This is on auto level. So as long as you're in the right mode, it's automatically leveling. Um, the thing about it is you can't do, you have to have it facing within reason, your um, workspace, um, not like up high and tilted one way or another. So for example, we had to set up a tripod on a higher surface if we wanted to get our laser level up that high. It's no big deal, totally doable, but um, it's a super helpful tool and it's like easy button. So, so what you're gonna do is you have your brick roller and you're going to go down and you're gonna dip it and swirl it in your water. The water is serving as kind of a barrier type of release um, on the surface of your roller and it helps it to release um, and give Do you want to give them a quick show the roller? Give them a close-up of the a roller texture. and the texture I don't see myself. and Yeah, you're yes. you're good right there. So most of your um, yeah. m The the work that this is doing mostly happens on your gap lines mm -hmm. for the most part You're not even making contact with this surface. You can if you go on even thicker but for the most part you're not and the results are great without mm -hmm. it and um it's probably a little easier so mm -hmm. let's show we're going to show two different ways today but the first way we're going to do is is this here dipping in water and rolling direct okay so these vertical grout lines you want to pay attention because you're going to have a pattern happening that's staggered so for example i know i want this one to land here which means I'm going to actually line this bottom one up here, okay? And I'm going to go slowly, okay? There's no rush. Let me get in there close for you guys. Now I'm paying attention to, I'm pausing, I'm paying attention to staying parallel with this line here, which I'm doing pretty decent Whoop, job. you went up. Oh, there we go. There we go, Zs. That's because you're leaning so much. Yeah, I, I don't want to get in the way of the camera, but if you're not right. in the way of the camera. But okay, so here's a great If example. you're not having to navigate a camera, it's. <laughs> yeah, that's the. But that actually still looks really good. Yeah, it does. But here's what I want to show you. If you get off, a little bit here, like it went whoop de doo mm -hmm. a little bit there. Just take this, line your thing up, and then bring it down just a bit, and compensate. That's a bit too much. Okay? Boom. Now. Yeah. So the angle of the camera is actually making it look like it's not, but now in person, it yep. is level. Okay. So just really quick, let me show you. Okay. There, you can see it's actually perfectly level. Okay, nice. Okay. So this is gonna be there, so this is gonna be here. You ready? Mm-hmm. No, I'm seeing that this is like hitting this like oh, almost two inches. So I'm going to keep that. Oops, did I get it all high? Did I go down? I went down a little bit. Okay, cool. So here's what you do now. <laughs> Where's the trowel? Yeah. 
I want to just do this over because I got, I sloped down because the camera's right here so I can't get in front of it. So it's a little challenging. So I'm gonna go right to that grout line there and run that over. And we're being a little perfecty because the truth is that that could be fixed in the next row too. Totally. So I'm gonna line up this and I'm gonna try not to slope down again so like the camera's here. Here, let me, me move the... Yeah, move the camera back so I can get a better... There we go. Slide on. There we go. Better? Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. So let's do the next one down and then we'll show mm. the other. You know what I would do actually right here is make that look like a big chunky grout. Like old, yeah. like old brick is. Yeah, totally. That's why you're not, you're leaving allowances very forgiving in mm -hmm. that way. Let's see. Now, if I wanted to move the level down a little bit so it's closer to my roll, I can. Beautiful. Okay, sweet. An inside corner. Oh, oh, so that's exactly what I wanted to demo here. Easy peasy. You are just So that going has to... some molding on it. So it's not quite an inside corner, but it'll give you the idea. Right, of getting right up to that. And it's relevant mm -hmm. for this too. I tended to let mine just fade out. However, you can also, let's just take a wet brush and continue it. Like that. Yeah, I did just did our bathroom upstairs mm -hmm. and I love it so much. Mm -hmm. So you make, can see make that into grout. This? No. Where? Where oh, you, here? You got a little double. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make that a grout line. Because I love that old vintage brick that has like the double grout lines yeah, and the where it, exactly. all that stuff. Nice. Very okay, cool. I'm going to do one. Well, let me do no, one. No, we should do. I want okay, to do, do one. This is where things get yeah. a awry. I've do you actually, want me to lower the level? I or have, are you good? Um, no, I'm just going to follow the grout lines. So I would compensate a teeny bit in here, so, okay. which just means stay straight it high, and catch, catch it, it on the high right yeah, here. I see that. Okay. Okay. So I have never done this. <laughs> Hold on. I'm just realizing. So we need to, we need to. I've been with Josie while she's um, been doing it. Pay attention to where our vertical grout line is going to go. Oh, right. So this the bottom one. one is going to be right here so okay. that this one lands halfway on that one. Can okay. I see what that even? No. Okay. Let me go side. Okay. Are you going to do this? Yeah. Go. Okay, so nice. you catch a yeah, little bit. Yeah, exactly. Right Just here. a smidge high right through here will compensate. Oh, yeah, perfect. So it's all about that spotting. Mm -hmm. Now you're slipping down a little bit, so tilt just. Well, I went back to meet the grout line. Oh. So you're saying the. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Beautiful. So easy. It is. So it is totally I have fun. So much it brick is in my house. so fun. I have painted brick and vintage brick and yes. classic brick. <laughs> totally. My husband's gonna get tired of brick. So I'm gonna lower this, and we are a little off, but that's okay. We're always a little off. We're always a little off. So should we finish this wall up? So let's. Um. Yeah, but let's do. We're gonna do the second technique. Oh right. Um. This is a different look. Okay. This is really it's fun. fun. It's fun. It's different look, fun. but it's fun. So let's, okay, this really helps to have a second person. Okay, I'll help kind you. Because what you're going to do is make sure they can see. To lay this, but you're going to. Oh, yeah, to, they can. Uh, let me go down a little bit. You actually. are going to try to give yourself 
slack. And then get this laid in, okay, onto here. It's going to cling nicely, but giving yourself a little bit of slack um, so it's not taut on the surface because we are going to roll into it and it um, gives you a better impression if you're not, you have played your not, slack. Yeah, so that the plastic isn't yes. pulling on your joint compound. Exactly. So, again, we're going to do here. And it's a little trickier to see the line above you, so you want to pay attention to that. And... Okay, I'm gonna just am I right? Yeah, you're good. Okay, so now we're gonna slowly peel this off. You don't wanna do more first? Oh, yeah, good Let's idea. Do more. Let's do more. Good idea. Do a few lines so they can see. Okay. Spot me because I'm not I didn't move the laser down. Hmm? Spot me because I didn't move the laser down. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, go down a little. Do you, should we move the laser down or? No, do I need to okay. go down? Just spot me. No, uh, up. I. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I. Like I ideally, <laughs> you would want to move the laser down, but yeah, okay. I think you're. I think you're good. We'll find okay. out when we we'll pull the plastic off. Okay, let's do one more. One no, more. Let me look back. The beauty is, I can't. Is it crooked? No. I mean, oh, a yeah. little, but that's okay. a little. So, it's yeah. All right. And like I said, we're showing you how forgiving it is. So, right. Because you could totally uh, re trowel that if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay. This will be a little bit like Alice in Wonderland, Brett. <laughs> but don't worry about that. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, here is that method. It's pretty cool. It is. And actually, it looks pretty straight. It does. Yeah. In these areas, I could have pushed a little harder. Ah, but yeah. But really, I take that back mm -hmm. because um, depending on how thick it is, you'll have areas that don't have as deep of an impression. But that overall ends, lends to the look. So... To find a stockist near you is our store locator on our website, ironorchiddesigns.com. And you can find a stockist that will that carries this brick roller. Okay. Wow. Look at how close we are on level down here. Just saying, guys. Oh, yeah. Holy. Boy, they can't see that. But oh. hold on. See? I mean, it's hard at this angle, but still. Yeah, totally. Looking good. All right, so let's talk about dry time. Yes, so this, Shall we? because it's thick, it's thick, your dry time is going to be, you want to give it a couple of good days. Depending on conditions, depending on how thick you went on, all those variables, you want to give it, a, you want it to be completely dry. You're going to get some cracking, but what is cool about this and mm -hmm. why it's fine to go on so thick is you have built-in uh, tension spots so that mm -hmm. it... It can shrink Oops. without major cracking. Um, you'll get minor cracking. You can see up here, just because when mediums dry, um, you get tension within the bulk, depending on how thick of it, thick it is. So, yeah, and if you speed up the drying with fans, that can actually increase your cracking. So, yeah, what you're if you have, want cracking, then yeah, that might be a good this thing. This does look really cool. It's got, in fact, you should get in yeah. and just show. Um, it's got a different but really cool look mm -hmm. um, on the one we use the plastic on. So it's super, both of them are awesome. Um, one thing if that's an upside to the plastic one is you don't have water dipping happening. So it can make it a little less wet and messy. Um, and of course you want to protect your walls. But once this is dry, you have raw joint compound. You always must seal it. It's not... You can't use it just like that. So here it is will kind of with the plastic over it. It's more of a pillowy, softened the brick. The edges are softened. Mm -hmm. Which you'll, you know, some brick is like that. And then up here is a sharper, more uh, like the 
overspill grout kind of look. Yes. And now up here is the part that we have allowed to dry. And should we show them some painting of the... Yeah, we were gonna try try out a technique that we've been playing with for mm -hmm. making it look like it's been painted, but it's wearing off. Um, we're gonna take some brick, brickish type tones and colors um, and put them on our distress stamp and then just go over and apply it to the surface. So what you end up having is brick that looks like it had painted um, and over the years had worn off on its high areas, exposing the color from behind. So let's do that. Oh, but I did want, want to say that, like I said, you can, um, I was talking about sealing. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing of it is, is you want to use for when you, if you go to paint it, depending on what the technique you're using, and we're, we're going to be sharing other techniques over the coming weeks, but um, if you're going to use a paint, like this one up here, we did use a solid paint, um, you get the one that has the primer or use a primer. The primer has like PVA components in it that really help with adhesion to the raw joint compound. So that's something to talk about and always consult your manufacturer's instructions and all that. So, okay, okay. let's get our colors loaded. I don't have a surface to show. So I've, I'm just using one of our thin mounts as a kind of a palette. Um, and we've got some reddish brown, a really bricky tone, and then a really warm, um, not quite orange, but a creamy, what would you call it? Something mm. warm, creamy. It's a beautiful yeah. brick color so that you to... see in a lot of vintage brick. Okay, so it looks a little bit like ugly ketchup and mustard right now, <laughs> but don't worry about that. It's gonna look like brick. And we're using our Distress Stamp and Josie is mixing different brick colors so that it just, anytime you add blending of colors, it adds more character, more depth, and it will look more authentic. Okay, so I'm gonna get up here. Okay, now this is not going to go flat on here because we have so much texture and highs and lows. So you're going to take your hand and make contact with these spots. Oh, very cool. Now, I'm gonna Ooh. repeat that. And we're gonna turn the direction. We're gonna mix the colors. Mm -hmm. I love that um, deep reddish brown. Yes. And you can see that the funny thing about, we have noticed the eye. When you know that this is not real brick, when you first see this technique, you, you kind of look at it and think, well, does it look like brick? But it, oh, it, oh, I love that. Are you feeling it, guys? Are you guys feeling it now? <laughs> like you seriously it looks so much like white washed brick and how yeah. easy was that mm, I'm loving it I'm loving it all the time sorry was, for the wobbly I'm actually holding the tripod up because it is really high and we don't have a tripod that high so and I want I want you guys to really see what she's doing here Are you going on pretty juicy with that paint, yes, Joe's? Yes, yes. Okay, very juicy with the paint. Yes. Oh, I'm loving that. Yes. The Distress Stamp really is the perfect companion to the uh, brick roller for this technique. Okay, I've got to put this down. My arms are getting tired. <laughs> so I will go like this. You could also dry brush. You could. You would probably get a very different look. Yes. Um, try different things. I will say the Distress Stamp actually works very, very well for adding random color. 
to things. We use it all the time to distress furniture and wall treatments and other things. So, but you can, yeah, get in there and play with different tools and different techniques and start paying attention to brick that you love. Really um, notice colors and textures and find brick that just you adore and then emulate it. Beautiful. I am loving this. Okay, so do we want to keep going, Jose, or finish off camera and uh, close it with a pick? Oh, there you go. That's a probably good idea. I'm going to okay. go in with a little this lighter warm. Do you seal it again after stamping? That depends. Um, for this, because I, I made sure to use a flat. This is a primer um, paint all-in-one. Um, and it's flat and this is going to be flat. So we don't won't really have much in the way, if any, of sheen differences. So that shouldn't be necessary to uh, seal this so after it cures. It's a, this is a chalk type paint. You could also use, um, a latex if you chose to, but I like the way the chalk type paints, um, engage with our stamps and the way they wear um you know you don't have that latex in them that is different for walls but um it just wears differently so yeah let's go oh i like that warmth coming through yeah that is the perfect brick color Ooh, yes. so party it is loving, loving that it. Very cool. Okay. Okay, you guys, this has been so fun and much requested. We're happy to have been able to show you how to do this. But of course, this is just the beginning. There are so many more techniques we oh, want yeah. to show you. We've got a list, a laundry list a of la all the brick stuff. And there's just so many different types and we can show you exactly how to get the look that you want. So stay tuned and we're gonna finish up this wall today and show you all the amazing depth and character you can get with simple paint on this brick roller, okay? All right, guys, bye.